I was wondering, you used to be at Castle Lot previous to Grimm as kind of the scary, creepy, loner dude. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it feels like somehow in Grimm you're the most same normal character. <laughs> Is that something you're enjoying? I, yeah, no, I, I totally. That's a good question. I totally. Uh, it's really fun to play someone who, despite, you know, having this thing in them, this capacity uh, to freak out and morph and be bad, uh, the fact that that the other side is really a, a kind, sort of um, meticulous, devoted person is really a delight, actually, to play. Um, and it is a change, and I love it, yeah. I just had a question about Monroe's character. I think he's a great, intricate character, and I'm wondering how much they've told you about his past, or how you picture how he got to be who he is. Yeah, that's a good question. We did. We talked at the very, very beginning of the first year, which feels like nine years ago right now. Um, it, those types of questions were asked, and answers were given, as far as how long I've been from the old world, what prompted my change from the other way of being a blue bod to being the type I am now. And um, yeah, there, there were you know questions about like my parents, I think we sort of decided that my grandparents came over and that my parents sort of spoke German in the house with my grandparents, and so I'm second generation, you know? Like, we talked about that stuff, yeah. Still connected to the old world, though, you know? Here we go. My question is for Salas. Um, I know before you play a lot of sort of crazy characters, but I really like the way, whenever you play Monroe, stuff, and so there's some scenes where you seem to have a lot of rage bubbling underneath. Now, do you ever want a chance to, like, Unleash that in episode. You want to like really show your yeah. blue bass side. Yeah. With the other <laughs> I'm with you, man. Uh, and in, in in an early episode of this coming season, Monroe gets to he gets off of the chain, so it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Miss Coffee, is there ever a time when you want Adeline to be you know nice? <laughs> Okay. Um, best in biology. When Rosalie and Monroe have a baby, will it be a or a fuchsbach? Another fantastic question that I promise you is answered. Nothing else? It's just uh, nothing else. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is Claire. I recently saw you on uh, Royal Pains. Yes. Yeah. And I didn't realize who you were because you were such a nice person on the show. <laughs> Until at a point you talked about, you know, you worked in your neighbor's cat and that just brought me out working with your cat. Yeah. Uh, it's, what was it like actually playing someone nice for a change? Um, <laughs> it was so boring. <laughs> uh, no, that episode, because in that episode, my character on Royal Pains gets scratched by a cat and is struck down with cat scratch fever. Like, yeah, at the end of the episode. And so when I, I mean, they don't watch Grip. I don't know how, like, they don't watch Grip, I'm sure. Or, like, they didn't tell me that that was uh, so ironic on purpose. <laughs> My question is for uh, Silas, and I was wondering, I was noticing a lot of similarities as I watched the show between Monroe on Grimm and Seymour on Burn Notice. How much of that is the writers putting that in there, and how much of that is what you bring to I'm, I'm totally curious, what did you, what sort of similarities, like behaviorally, or, or what? The seemingly at times manic energy. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just my unique gift. <laughs> no, but the character
character's also written that way, you know, I mean, that's really interesting because there is a kind of, Seymour had this kind of like a man crush thing, like he wanted to be part of the gang, you know, and I think Monroe has a kind of like, I want to, hey, I want to kind of help, you know what I mean? Like, so I think there is a kind of a, a yearning thing that's in there, yeah. That's a good catch. So, uh, before I ask my question, uh, Claire, you're beautiful. <laughs> uh, Silas, you're the best werewolf character ever. <laughs> um, your, both of your characters have come a real long way from first season to now. Uh, how much of their development was something that you were aware of going into the role versus what's just kind of evolved over time? <laughs> say it's for me mostly natural evolution like I was not aware like I said earlier I think I, I pretty much knew from the beginning that I was going to be a reluctant partner and there was going to be a whole storyline about sort of being a traitor to the vessel to help this guy but he is he's a different kind of grim I'm a different kind of vessel that type of deal but the specifics of it and the growth of it is really the writers. Yeah, and I, I mean, I had no idea. I knew when I auditioned that it was going to be this kind of recurring character, sort of hitman, evil henchman for Bernard. Um, but I, yeah, being made a regular was a total surprise. I just always assume I'm going to kill him. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, the, the stuff we, we've started to shoot so far, there's, there's a lot. Uh, the, the royal storyline is further expanding every week, so. Been Hello. Uh, for me, this isn't a show that I usually watch, and I kind of came across it by accident, but I really, really have grown to love it, and it's one of the few shows that I do watch. So I'm kind of wondering if it's come across as kind of surprising to you how, how well it's done, and maybe pulled in an audience like me who really isn't into like the monster. Oh, yeah. yeah, totally, yeah. man. It's, it, it's The success of it is a surprise. Not because I don't have faith in everybody and myself, and, but just... You know, anything. I did anything that makes it, man. Anything that, that lands and, and, and has a voice and people pay attention to that's unique is just rare and hard to find. And the fact that viewers like you are tuning in and are interested enough shows that the balance that the writers are trying to strike is working, where it's, you know, David Greenwald said this early, early on, he was like, it's not two separate worlds, you know, because we started at the same time as Once Upon a Time, and everyone was comparing us because they were fairy tale linked things, but the fact is their world is like there's this place and that place, and they're different worlds, and what's cool about Grimm is it's one world, so it's the world we live in, so the cop stuff is real. It just is our world through a different lens. And so they're doing something right, that they're getting viewers who aren't, you know, fantasy or sci-fi normal viewers. And I think that that's a credit to the writers. So this sort of thing was more normal, and um, the soap actually takes less time than this takes. Um, I think because we're never outside, like it's all on this one stage, so you know there's no location changes or anything like that. But um, I think you know the work is always that you just try to do your best and you try to figure out who the character is, and, and that's all the same. But as far as just like logistics, hours longer on, on this type of show. Yeah, Grim is, Grim is a pretty, it's a pretty grueling thing to shoot, actually. 
we're outside a lot at night, and, and they really make it as cinematic as they can. And so it, it man, we shot 10 pages a couple of weeks ago in a day. I don't know if you got it, but that's like that's insane. Uh, oh, as far as the litter? Yeah. <laughs> that's a, Tweet hashtag as far as the litter. <laughs> if I tried to do that again in a million years, I couldn't do it. Okay, um, we talked about that idea, jo joked about it. Um, I can't really speak to it because I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, it's a legitimate thought that's out in the world. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Vessant husbandry is not my <laughs> strong suit. Hi, um, my, question, my question's kind of for both of you. Um, it's kind of rambling in my head, I'm sorry. Um, the whole sci-fi and fantasy and fairy tales is sort of new to like normal cable TV. It's like they, they've had a couple of shows, you know, that have lasted a long time, um, but this is sort of like, it's becoming popular, but even Grimm is still different. You know, they, they had the one, um, I don't remember what Besson she was, but the little girl who was like, ripping people to shreds and like, you know. And badger, then, she's like a badger or something yeah, like something that. Yeah, something creepy, you know, yeah. and, and it's like, I mean, neither of you look like what they would usually, you know, they typecast, you know, they do these like 18 year old guys who are like, I've got a sexy body. Are you talking about Teen Wolf? Well, yeah. Or Tyler Long. No, not him. He's awful. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm talking about real actors. <laughs> okay, I really want to thank you because all of them are going to find the X Track director now. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> any sort of difference in the show, like, that this is sort of different than other things. Like, I had never seen you in, in shows before, Silas, and I saw you in like, the first episode of Grimm, and I'm like, that's different. And then I got to know his character, and I'm like, this is amazing. I don't, you don't see these types of people on yeah. TV. It's always like these sexy people that want to have sex with yeah. millions of other people. <laughs> It's like, it's all coming out of an organic um, place. Yeah. Uh, and the characters on our show, they're, yeah, they're real, they're real people. Yeah, and I think if you look, like, if you look at who they cast, you know, I mean, obviously, Claire is a gorgeous woman, right? Let's, you know, that's, but, Jim and, and David is a handsome, handsome man, all right? You know, but, they also cast people. You know, Claire is a person, you know what I mean? And uh, David has real personality. The, the people that they cast on the show by some amazing radar that they just have, they cast cool, interesting people. They didn't cast, uh, it's very hard to say this without being, you know, uh, um, deprecating of others, which is not what I, my intention at all. It's just to suggest that the radar that the people who cast this show had, they, they wound up creating a group of people that are humans before they're actors, I think, in a way. Is that fair to say? I just wanted to add one thing, Claire. I saw you on an episode of Psych and you ruined it. Because the moment I saw you, I'm like, she's a bad guy. Oh my god! That was so long ago. Thank you. Hi, over here. Uh, I would like to ask a question. What is the most, because this is an unusual show, what's the most unusual scene that you've had to uh, do? And actually, and counter to that, what is the most fun one you've done? <laughs> There's a lot of unusual stuff. There's a lot, I think my most unusual, we 
shot re just recently, so it's in the upcoming season. So I can't give too much away, but there are body parts involved. <laughs> and there are, uh, spe yeah, yeah, dismembered body parts. Also, the most fun scene I've ever shot, <laughs> dismembered body parts. <laughs> You know, it's really hard to say. It's hard to, you know, there was this machine that they they built where we had to crank to like blow, like stop the bat creature from having. You know, that was kind of weird, just cranking this machine. But you know, the whole show is so weird that the whole it's just a weird, it's just a weird, fun world to live in. Like, the, yeah, it's all weird and it's all fun. <laughs> Been one of the many special guests on your show. Has there been any kind of fandom moment where you just kind of have a geek out? <laughs> like Has there um, been a geek out moment? I'm trying to think of geek out moments in my life. And I'm, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm blanking right now.